Good morning. Welcome to worship here at Trinity. We're glad that you are here with us. We will prepare our hearts and minds for worship with a prelude by Gary Wood. Good morning. We are glad that all of you have joined us this morning. Uh, today we are glad to have our pickup choir with us leading our songs for today, so thank you to them for coming. We will be having our Zoom coffee hour following the service. Uh, the link for that will be in the comments for you to join. Uh, next week our praise band Soul Purpose will be leading worship, so please join us next week as well. Uh, before we begin worship today, uh, we want to say a thank you to our music director, Julie. Uh, she will be finishing up her time here the end of this month, and uh, Daryl from the worship team is going to make a thank you presentation to her. Uh, on behalf of the uh, congregation and both choirs, I'd like to 
thank you for your five years of service here at Trinity. It's been uh, a joy working with you, and I hope your endeavors going forward are joyful and fruitful. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I would just like to say, oh, that's loud. Um, I have enjoyed my time here. Uh, all of you have become like family to me. And so the decision to, uh, to step down was a very difficult one. But I want all of you to know, and all of you at home, that uh, you will always be in my thoughts and my prayers. And I'm, I'm, I don't like to say goodbye because I believe that uh, we'll see each other again at some point. So again, uh, thank you for the many, many wonderful years here. And it's been my joy and my distinct honor to have served. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. Please join me then in our call to worship. Here in this time, God welcomes all the dreamers as well as the doubters. Here the warriors and wanderers can call on God by name. Here in this time, we can remember all the ways God has graced us. Here in these moments, we are reminded that God is always with us. Here we join together those daring enough to step out of comfort into the unknown. Here in this faith space, we will find the courage to cry out, God save us in every situation. Our first song is Listen, God is Calling and the choir will help to lead us. and lead us in prayer and bring our scripture to us.
Let us pray. O God, our defender, storms rage around us and within us and causes us to be afraid. Send your spirit to help your people listen to you. Rescue your people from despair. Deliver your sons and daughters from fear and preserve us in the faith of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. So, a right relationship with God is not something that we achieve by heroic efforts. It is a gift received in the proclamation whose content is Jesus Christ. This proclaimed word creates our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hence, Christian proclamation is an indispensable component of God's saving actions. Our reading today, first reading today is from the 10th chapter of Romans. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven that is, to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the abyss? That is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is, the, the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart, and so is justified. And one confesses with the mouth, and is so saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we're continuing our trip through Matthew's Gospel. Um, and in Matthew's Gospel, he typically portrays Jesus' disciples as people of little faith, who fail despite their best intentions. In this story, Matthew shows how Jesus comes to the disciples when they are in trouble and sustains them in their time of fear and doubt. This is from the 14th chapter of Matthew. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But this time, but by this time the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately, Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me! Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, you of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Praise 
Grace to you and peace from God, our Creator, and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who walks with us in the midst of the storm. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. I've always loved this biblical image of feet bringing good news to people. It comes from the prophet Isaiah, and Paul quotes it in his letter to the Romans. I love that image and that the feet that bring good news are beautiful. I love this image for a couple reasons. One reason is that this image reminds me that bringing good news to people is not something I can do sitting down or standing still. It is something that needs to be brought to someone. You have to move. You have to go. You have to walk somewhere and bring good news. The other reason I like this image is because it is the good news that makes something we often think of as ugly, beautiful, namely feet. But you know, it's not really about feet. It's about bringing good news. Bringing good news doesn't require feet, but it does require movement. It does require going. It requires going to those who yearn to hear. So whether you go on your feet, or in a wheelchair, or through internet wires, or your feet power a bicycle, or you go through phone lines, or through some type of motorized vehicle, bringing good news requires moving out and makes all those things that move you beautiful. Paul is writing to a group of Jesus followers in Rome. That's a lot of movement for someone in the ancient world. Traveling from Jerusalem to Rome would have involved feet and boats and camel feet and caravans and I don't know what else. But Rome would have never heard good news if Paul hadn't moved. As Paul calls on the church in Rome to bring good news to others, he asks, how else will people hear about the good news of Jesus Christ if we do not move out? And Jesus in our gospel moves as well. So after feeding the 5,000 plus people that we heard about last week, he puts his disciples in a boat and dismisses the crowds and moves to a mountain to pray and to rest and to renew. And then he moves back into the world. He can't stay on the mountain to do his ministry. He must move back out into the world. And his feet take him across the Sea of Galilee where he encounters a storm and his disciples in their boat. And of course, when the disciples see him, they are afraid. I would be too. You don't often see people walking across the water in the wee hours of the morning. But Jesus calls to them and assages their fears. Peter is eager to be with Jesus again, and he wants to come out to Jesus. So Jesus calls, and Peter steps out of the boat onto the water. What would that even feel like? To rest your feet on the top of water and to walk? But Peter does, for a few steps anyway. But then his fear of the world around him, the wind, gets the best of him and he falters. And Jesus then moves to Peter with good news. Jesus moves to Peter with the one thing that Jesus always comes to people with. Salvation, grace, rescue, compassion, love, good news. Jesus once again does what he always does. 
he saves. Lifting Peter out of the water, he reminds Peter of this. Just a little bit of faith, Peter. Why the doubts? I always come with salvation and restoration and love. Trust me. Jesus always comes bearing good news. So what about our feet? What about your feet? Or your internet lines? Or your chair wheels? Or your phone lines? Or your daily movements? Do they bear the good news? Are they beautiful because they bear good news? Do you move about your daily life bringing good news to your family, your coworkers, your neighbors? One of our core values here at Trinity is empowerment. Empowerment to serve and to lead. Trusting that Jesus always comes to us with salvation and life and compassion and grace, we are empowered to bring that good news to those whom our movement causes us to encounter. Jesus' movement into our world empowers you and me to move out into the world as well. To move with good news, the good news of who Jesus is and what he has done and what he continues to do for all of us. So when your feet take you through your day, may they be beautiful feet, because they bring good news. Amen. And our hymn is God of Tempest, God of World.
The peace of the Lord be with you always. As we prepare for our prayers, please share God's peace with one another in the comments. And the choir can wave to everybody. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. For your whole church throughout the world, give courage in the midst of storms so that we may see and listen to Jesus calling. Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. May we follow Christ wherever he leads. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. For the well-being of your creation, protect waterways, forests, lands, and wildlife from exploitation and abuse. Protect and sustain those experiencing hurricanes, tropical storms, and wildfires. Help the human family endeavor to sustain and be sustained by the resources of your hand. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the nations and their leaders, in you, steadfast love and faithfulness meet, and righteousness and peace kiss. May nations in conflict know the peace that is the fruit of justice, and the justice that is the path to peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those in need, everyone who calls upon your name will be saved. Accompany all who are lonely. Hear the voices of those who cry out in anguish and support those who are frustrated in their search for an affordable place to live. We pray for those suffering, sick, or dying this day. Danny, Carrie and Kathy, Sarah, Joyce, Jim, Iris, Barb, Dominic, and David, Paul, and those in your hearts and minds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our congregation, you have gathered us today as your people, and we thank you for this gift. We pray for those who are new to this community, for students and teachers preparing for an uncertain new school year, and for those struggling with unexpected hardship Supply us generously with your grace for our life together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we'll continue now with the hymn, My Life Flows On in Endless Song.
God calls us to step out in faith, to follow where he leads, even if what he calls us to do seems impossible. So let's go from this time together with courage, trusting in God's presence and power and eager to bring good news to others. And may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and within you wherever you find yourself this week. Amen. Amen. Next week, join us. We will have our praise band, Soul Purpose. And we conclude with a postlude by Gary Wood. <laughs>